Maestro Gaming presents a Wobbly Wagon Wheel production about a nomad man. That man is the Gypsy King. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to another Maestro Gaming production. And as you can see, we are jumping straight into our first game against KV Korteridge. Yeah, I've probably completely butchered that, but as you can see, our team is pretty much unchanged. Except for the eagle-eyed of you who might have noticed a new face. But we will get to that new face in just a second. First of all, our starting lineup is Galon in goal. Vucevic on left-hand side of defence. On the right, of course, is Swavers. In between them is Corfries and Pieri. In front of them two is, of course, Kubasic in that defensive midfield role. Now, Bizamani and Belt hold the central midfield with Fernandez on the left, Verif on the right, and Milcevic up front. Now, our bench, Pirard stays in as our backup goalkeeper. We have Weigel coming in as our backup right-hand sided defender. We then have Fulon. Now, Fulon wants to go out on loan. He wants to be a starter, but basically he's not good enough to be our starter. So he's probably going to go out on loan. We're getting another guy in from the division below who's relatively the same sort of standard. So swap him out, get someone else in. Loan for loan. The big issue with him is we've had to find someone else who is Belgium because he is one of our homegrown players. Now, Jimenez joins him on the bench, of course, our main backup central midfielder. We have then Kyoto for the backup on the left-hand side. Our backup now on the right-hand side for Verif, though, is Zanelli. And Zanelli is in on loan. He's in on a lot of money, but he's a really good player. The only reason he is not starting, though, is Verif and his amazing 17 free kicks. Now, if Verif doesn't perform, Zanelli is definitely going to slide into the team. Not sure who's going to take our set pieces, but we shall have a look at Zanelli in just a second. Of course, our bench is rounded out by Hernberg. So, speaking of Zanelli, he is 3.5 star, 4 star potential, 27 year old Kosovan with 18 caps and 7 goals. Now, as you can see, plenty of teams have bids in for him. That includes... Hold on. There we go. Shiva, FC... Lorient, Nashville, Tennessee, Inter Miami, and on the wanted list, there is even a few of our league rivals, including Wargem. So, his history, what is that like? Well, he started off in Sweden, of all places. He was at IF Ellsborg. He was there for four seasons. His first two didn't do anything, got one goal in 16 in his third, in his fourth, got 10 in 30. Now that got him a transfer for an undisclosed fee to Holland, where he joined SC Herena Veen. Now, he scored four goals in 17 games, followed by six in 32, four in 22, and then three in 17. That, in turn, got him a 3.1 million transfer to France, where he went to Reims. Now, he scored three goals in 15 for them, one goal in 20, where he got one assist and a 6.95 average rating that then dropped a little bit to 6.82 kept that one assist but got six goals in 37 now played one extra game the season after got seven goals one assist and one player of the match is average rating though dropped to a 6.75 and well it continued to drop in his this current season he's got one goal in five games and a 6.62 average but he's here on loan he is going to be our backup winger and as you can see, he is mainly a left winger, but we're going to utilise him on that right-hand side, just because we have plenty of left-hand sided wingers. As you can see, he's got very well-rounded stats. Crossing does struggle a little bit, so maybe we could use him as an inside forward, but his balance and vision aren't quite there for that. Same with his long shots. So definitely going to be a winger for us. And yes, he's a solid little player, especially with that agility of 16 and pace of 14. He's hopefully going to bomb it past defenders. But without further ado, let's head into the dressing room. So, Dirk Girard thinks we should tell the team they're expected to pick up where they left off. And that is a reasonable idea. I want to be assertive because this team actually responds quite well to that. We could climb out the relegation zone with a win here. So get out there and impress me. 
Well, listen, key ones. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse. So, Fabian Edder of Goal Publication, an enthusiastic fellow with no relationship to us. At the lowest scorers in the Pro League A, what are you doing to impress Wasland Bavarians? Impress? Improve? Yes, the heat is getting to my brain, folks. So, we're looking at... I apologise. Everything from tactical changes to individual work. Um, yeah, we're confident of success. Hook has reigned supreme at the back for them. Um, the lads have looked sharp in training. We are going to destroy their defence. We shall rip them apart with our 51% position at the moment. In the first six minutes. Ooh, it's gone up to 63. We are in fact the dominant team in today's game. I feel like in this league it's not necessarily where in the league you are, but more a case of home field advantage. Seems like the teams with home field advantage seem to thrive with it. Or that seems to be the case with us at least. When we've played 6th, 7th in the league, it hasn't felt like we've played 6th or 7th in the league when we're at home. But that means today is the game we really need to be winning. Schwaver's shot is blocked though, and he plays it back to Kubasik. Back to Schwaver's. Schwaver's now with Kubasik once more. And Schwaver's, of course, plays it out wide to Verif though. He can get a cross in from here. Keeps it in nicely. Plays it back to Schwaver's once more. Belt to the area. Belt. Ooh. Lovely effort, but unfortunately cannot keep it on target. And as you can see, we are pretty dominant on the shots. We need to get them on target, like. As you can see, 6 to 3. 7 to 3 now. 1, 2, 3 though. They are getting all those on target, whereas we are just hitting and hoping at this point. So, you know what? Demand a bit more. I'm going to put the pressure on. See, the lads appreciate a bit of pressure. They know they can do better than they are. So, come on, lads. Pick it up. Get us a goal. Or just cruise into half time. I guess we're cruising into half time, ladies and gents. So, it is 9 shots to 4. 2 on target to the 4. 1 foul to the Four. Yes, they've got a very good trend going on with these fours. Zero yellow cards, zero yellow cards. 54% possession to their 46% possession. Now, the best performer for us, of course, has been Belt with a 6.9 and 91% passing completion ratio. For them is Golubovic with 50% crossing completion ratio and a 6.8. Now, struggling to perform is Milcevic with zero overall chances and a 6.5. And for them is Kagel Ma Masha. Yeah, we're going Masha. I know it's wrong, but he's Masher. Gary Kagelmasher with his 6.4 and no reason for it. As you can see, we are the only game currently going on. Also, I just noticed they got a player injured on the ninth minute. So we can move out the relegation zone. Yes, exactly. Assertively. Um, we've been the better team. I mean, we have. But you know what? Um... I'm pleased with things. No, unlucky boys. I'm not happy. I knew they'd respond to that nicely. Could have gone down very badly with that, but I'm glad the lads responded in kind. And as you can see, Schwavers and Belt probably do need to go off. Same with Verif, really. So I'm probably going to take the risk of taking Verif off, although Fernandez has taken a knock. So, Fernandez, Zanelli, I guess you get to play on that left hand side today. Oof. Do you, though? Do you? Does he really get to play on that left-hand side? Is that what we're really going to do? No, we're not. Hmm. No, you know what? I'm going to take Verif off, but I'm going to give him a good five or ten minutes more. So we're going to have Zanelli on the left-hand side to begin with. He's going to swap over to the right when he goes off, and Kyoto is going to come on to the left-hand side. So I need to hold on to Kyoto. We are going to leave... Schwaver's on even though he's getting a bit tired. Felt is getting a bit tired, but he's performing. Verif, yeah. So we'll just hold out for the second sub. Second sub can come on around 62 minutes, 65, sort of that area. And that will be, of course, when we take off our midfielders. Now, looking at the nervousness of Belt, I'm actually going to risk it. So we are going to go double substitution. So there we go. You two. Now swap on over to opposite sides, and that is our substitutes. Hopefully no one takes an actual injury, and we can progress through this game. A lot of players are motivated, so you know what, I'm not going to push them. I was going to push them, but they're looking okay, so no need to 
go and demand more out of them. Most of them are looking motivated, although as you can see, Zanelli and Milcevic are currently nervous. And well, we are not getting a whole lot going right now. And Pieri has also just gone and taken a knock. Great. Gallon though, Gallon plays it out to Core Fries. Please do not make a stupid mistake in additional time. Core Fries coming down this left hand side, plays it out to Kyoto. Kyoto, can he get a ball through? Plays it to Kubasik, who plays it out wide to Vucevic. Vucevic now to Jimenez, back to Kubasik. Kubasik, crossfield ball, lovely ball over to Schwavers. Come on, Schwavers, get a cross in. Oh, drag it back. No, crosses it. Unfortunately, the header can't be kept down by Milcevic, though. And that looks like the final shot of today's game as we finish up here. Not the worst result, not the best. We really should have gone and got three points out of that one. But, like I said, we were playing the top half team. Not bad result to take a draw from that. Now, we had 18 shots to their 9. 8 on target to their 6. 4 fouls to their 5. 0 yellow cards, 0 yellow cards. 53% possession to 47. Now, our best performer was Kubasik with a 7.3 and 90% passing completion ratio. For them was Kubasevic with a 68 passes completed and 7.1. Now struggling to perform was Fernandez. He took a bit of a knock, 0% crossing completion ratio and a 6.5. In fact, I'm probably not going to start him next game. I um, might have him starting on the bench in the next game. And I have enough for them with a 6.5. Zanelli I might have over on the left hand side. Fernandez, he has been struggling in the past couple of games, so get him on the bench. Show him he doesn't get guaranteed a starting spot. And maybe that'll pick up his form a bit and he can start in the game after but that is it for today's game so Kubasik gets player of the match don't be too hard on them that was a tough result to take um i'm disappointed lads i'm sorry my assistant but i'm disappointed as you can see we have gone one point behind these two but they have a game in hand so fingers crossed they don't take advantage of that but we have a game in five days time, so I'm going to give the guys a rest. I'm going to, in fact, do that right this second. As you can see, Pieri has taken a knock. So let's have a look at how long he is out. These guys are all technically still on rest from the previous time I did it. So, um, yeah, about that. <laughs> about that one, ladies and gents. I'm... I guess I'll have to wait for that rest to end before I can start the next one. But, no, I can recall it's training. I don't know who I had on that list who... Oh, it'll be Noah because of his injury. So, let's... Training... No? There's someone else on this list which... Isn't... Um, is it because of Pieri? Yes, it was because of Pieri. Because he's got that injury, he now can't train. I get it. No, nope, but it won't let me take him off. Okay. Well, I'll just figure that one out between this and the next segment. We shall now have a look at Kiki's injury. So, he's got a twisted knee. That is not good. How long are you out for, Kiki? Physio, five to nine days. So... We could rush him back for the next game. Probably not the smartest idea. Probably not going to come back till the next episode. But I shall figure that one out in just a second. And we shall see who... There we go. Five unbeaten. Not bad. Draw, win, draw, draw, draw. Bit too droy. But we have been unbeaten in five games. So not all bad. Anyways, I'm starting to ramble as usual. I'm going to head on over to Genk now, and I'll hopefully see you fine folks at the game in just a second. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to the luminous, otherwise known as Crystal Arena, home of Racing Gent, as you can see from behind me on the seats. Now, I'm going to give you a little spin around, and then we shall head on into today's game. So, as you can see, that is the stand opposite the dugout. We then have this one behind us which I believe the bottom side is standing room. I'm not 100% on that. Please don't quote me. We then have, of course, the dugout over here. And then the other stand is, of course, at this side. But that is the stadium. So without further ado, let's head on into today's match. 
Okay, ladies and gents, it is time to kick off our second game of today's episode. And as I said in the previous match, Zanelli is starting on the left-hand side instead of Fernandez. Now, his conditioning is a little bit weak, so he's probably going to have to go off at half-time, give him a half each, which works out pretty reasonably in my eyes. And, well, Hanna is starting in central defence. Pieri, I could have forced him into the team, but the first game of the next episode, which I believe in-game time is about three or four days away, is actually against Standard. Now, as you may have noticed, Standard is top of the league by quite a bit of distance. So we definitely need our strongest side to kick off the next episode. So Pieri is being rested, Hannah is coming in, and hopefully he can do a job here against Genk. But that is pretty much our team going into today's game. Oh, except for one new addition. We have O Oscan. He is our new addition in defence. He is a solid little backup. He's only two and a half star, but he has plenty of potential. He's here on loan from Westerlo, as you can see. He's got three and a half star potential. And, well, as you can see from his statistics, he is a solid ball winning midfielder. He can also play as a defensive mid, is which that's mainly what we got him in for, to be a defensive mid. And he can play that pretty well. He can also be nice cover for our defence. So as you can see, he covers the defence quite well as well. And, well, he covers that homegrown. He may be Turkish, but he is Belgian at heart. He has two under-21 caps and zero under-21 goals. And, well, he has quite the history. He started off at KV Mechelen and did nothing. He then went to Ghent on a free, and they didn't use him in the three seasons they had him. So he went on a free to Ostenda. They played him eight games. Then 13, stopped using him, played him for 39 games, which is a bit of a weird jump. I don't know why you'd use him for half season, stop using him, and then use him for a whole season. But that's their prerogative, I suppose. Then he went on a free transfer to Westerlo. Now we are, of course, paying them 81 grand to have him on loan here. And, well, he's been solid while he was at Westerlo. Two seven average ratings there, 6.77 there. He's been okay, so hopefully... He can be a nice bit of depth for our team going forward and cover one of those homegrown nation positions. Now, as you can see, they're going for a free for free, and hopefully we can exploit that. Hopefully they push a little bit on too far. We can get behind them, and yes, without further ado, let's try and do that. So Dirk Gerard thinks we Yeah, of course. We are going to assertively... In fact, we owe them revenge! It's always good to give him a revenge team talk. So, Jacob Piotrowski has proven himself to be an incisive passer in the Pro League A so far. Do you have a plan to stop him? Well, Marcel Fontaine of the Belgian Football Review, an enthusiastic fellow who is indifferent about us. He's a fine player, but we have fine players too. Given Zanelli's lack of match fitness, we've already discussed that. I think he can last the full match. Yes, full match. Totally not planning on getting him off at half time already. We haven't already pre discussed that. Lucky for us, he did not hear that conversation. But as you can see, there is pretty much every game in the league going on today. So this is a good opportunity for us to climb out of the relegation zone if we can pick something up here. I do believe we need a win though. And lucky for us, they do not take the lead through that opportunity. Now, let's have a little look who Wargem has, because I'm curious now. As you can see, Wargem lost their game, but unfortunately, KV Mechelen went and won theirs, so they've jumped up into that group. We are far behind these teams, around 10th and down, but yeah, it's definitely Wargem we need to be keeping an eye on. So, Wargem is currently versing Andelect. Andelect struggling down in 8th of all places. That is very weird for me to see, to be honest. But Anderlecht hopefully can turn their fortunes around, starting with today's game. Hopefully beat them into the ground, get rid of their morale, and they will hopefully never win another game in their careers. Yeah, a little bit optimistic. But Christian is coming forward for Ghent. Plays it back to Heinen. Heinen tries ball over the top. It's a lovely interception by Cole Fries. Heads it down for Piotrowski, though. Piotrowski is getting a crossover. Headed away by Schwavers. And it's Verif on the counter-attack. Come on, Verif. You've got a man on your right-hand side. Use him. Yes. Plays it up to Milcevic. 
Will he play it back to Verif? No, he plays it to Belt. He gets it out to Schwavers. He can get a good cross here. He's got space. Whips it in. And it's a lovely save. Zanelli hits a beautiful shot. Unfortunately, the goalkeeper is there to block it, though. Zerif whips one in. Headed away. Bizamani is going to collect it, though. And we are still in possession. What was that? Yeah. Kuki. I'm just going to call their goalkeeper Cookie. I don't know why. I just want to call him Cookie. So we're going with Cookie. The Cookie saves it. The Cookie did not crumble this time. We are... No, I don't want to praise them. I want them... Demand more. Demand more! Yes. Belt, I don't appreciate you crumbling a little bit at that call, but everyone else enjoyed it. So Belt, you need to get a little bit more... Okay. Yeah, you need to stop being so soft, Belt. Like, just take it on the chin. The whole team is taking it on the chin apart from you, Belt. So, accept that I want more from you and give me exactly that. But, as you can see, we have a free kick here with Verif. Lovely position. Oof. I expect better of you, Verif. You are a beautiful free kick taker, and that was not demonstrated in that one. But it is nil-nil here at Genk, and we can't really argue with that too much. They've had three shots to our 12, one on target to our 6. Three fouls to our 3, zero yellow cards, zero yellow cards, 39% position to 61. So, yet again, we are performing well, unfortunately not utilising our opportunities. And, well, that is disappointing in its own regard, but we're competing against teams we really probably shouldn't be. Anyway, their best performer is Cookie with his six shots saved in goal and a 7.3. For us, it's Schwavers. He's got a 7.6 and a 50% crossing completion ratio. Now, struggling to perform is Gutzel Yak for them with a 6.3 and Verif with a 6.4 for us. Now, Wargem is managing to hold on against Andelect at the moment, 0 0. Antwerp 1 1 with Bruges. Cecil Bruges is currently 1 0 against Eupen. Or the U-Bend, as I'm going to probably start referring to them. We then have a couple of draws here. That's a big draw for them. Standard, of course, top of the league. Muscron versus Usten. I think I want Usten. Or maybe a draw is good for us there. STVV and Genk. I don't... Genk? Ghent? I always get mixed up with Genk and Ghent. But Ghent, I don't think that really matters to us. Both of those are pretty high in the league. Dirk, tell the boys their effort. No, Dirk, I have much greater standards than you. Um, I'm far from pleased. Dig deep, lads. And you know what? I don't mind admitting that I was wrong. He's actually in better shape than Verif right now. So, Zanelli, you are going to remain on the pitch for now. Although, looking at that, our front three is our weak spot. So, you know what? You're not performing. Our front three needs a little bit of freshening up. In fact, hmm. no, we need his free kicks. So Holmberg can come on up front for now. Because we need Holmberg and his wonderful Swedish striking abilities to help us out here. And hopefully he can manage that in this second half. Schwavers. Schwavers coming down this right hand side. Can he get across? No. Plays it over to Kubasik and Belt. Kubasik once more. Schwavers has made a run but it's played into Fismani. Kubasik. We still have Schwavers in space on the right hand side. Belt plays it through to Homeberg though. <gasps> Homeberg you beautiful human. You absolute beautiful human. He put the effort in. To chase the ball down. It looked like it was going to be wasted. Roll out of play. He keeps it in. We did get lucky in the end. As you can see, look. He follows it down. Hits the post. Unfortunate on his original shot. But we got lucky on the bounce back. Hits the defender. And we are off to a flying start in the second half, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, we have crawled out the relegation zone. Zoltan Wargem have fallen into it. Bismani though, over to Belt. Belt now to Hana. Hana holding up the ball nicely. Will he play it out wide? No, he goes back to Core Fries. Core Fries tries the ball over to this left hand side. It's intercepted and it's possibly punished. No, Galon makes a lovely save. 
and we continue to hold this lead but they have a free kick and it's whipped in back post header oh that was a lovely finish i cannot begrudge paul onachu with that goal his 11th of the season in fact assisted by edon zahegrova yeah not going to try and pronounce that one twice but they have gone and fought their way back a few of our players are nervous we are going to tell them we demand more after that beautiful opening it's kind of gone back into an awful situation Zagrova though coming down the left hand side for them Kubasik gets the ball Kubasik don't dilly dally no that was an awful clearance Kubasik you should have just played it up the right hand side instead they have the ball back and it's with Petrowski now with Girotto. Girotto plays it back to the man who scored the own goal who plays it over to his left hand side Kubasik lovely inception plays it to Bizamani can we do anything with this now with Belt Belt back to Bizamani once more now will Bizamani ooh he plays it over to this left hand side, Fernandez. He has support in Vucevic. Will he use him? No. He goes back inside to Kubasic, who plays it out wide to. Ooh. Fernandez, lovely. Yes. Come on. The goalkeeper, much like every one of us, must have thought that had gone out. Fernandez, though, lovely job. Keeps it in on the line. And, well, he gets Verif's fifth goal of the season as he just holds it in play. Whips a lovely cross in, very fat the far post, the cookie pushes it into the goal, and we have the lead once more. So, you know what, lads? I don't do this often. You get a bit of praise. I'm going to praise you like I should. And, well, we have 10 minutes remaining of normal time. Everyone on the pitch is fired up. Their players are, our players are, and that's surely a penalty, ladies and gents. Yes, it is. The video ref has been called into action, and Cor Fries is stepping up to take this one. Can our centre back guarantee us this win? Yes, come on, Cor Fries. 3 1 here, ladies and gents. And there's only five, re five minutes remaining, possibly nine, ten, if we're at a push for additional time. But I think we can hold on to this two-goal lead. Surely we can hold on to this two-goal lead. Now, is that a big scoring... Ooh, Wadjem is actually drawing. But the fact that we have won has dragged us out of the relegation zone, ladies and gents. It is 3-1 here at KRC Genk. And, well, they had seven shots to our 27. Three on target to our 15. Seven fouls to our 6. One yellow card to one yellow card. 37% possession to our 63. Their best performer was Paul Anouchu with that really good goal and a 7 rating. Kubasik had a lovely performance in defensive mid for us. He got an 8.9 and 9 key passes. Now, struggling to perform, it's Kutsuliak. He got a 6.2. And Zanelli, he got a 6.4. As you can see, there was a few different milestones, but I'm not going to go through them. Feel free to pause if you are interested. Kubasik, of course, got the player of the match. Now, tell the boys that effort was excellent. I am indeed. That is exactly what I'm thinking. Passionately, that was really special. Nobody gave us a chance. Magnificent. Especially Kubasik. That was amazing. Heck, even Belt had a lovely performance. Some would say a belting performance in midfield. Yes, I made myself grinch with that one too. But as you can see, we have crept out the relegation zone and I get to demonstrate this point I made before. It goes on wins rather than goal difference because as you can see, our goal difference is awful compared to Wargem, but we have one more win than them. So that is us currently out of the relegation zone, but we are versing top of the table at the start of the next episode. And then we are, okay, the second game is not too bad, an away game down in 10th. But I thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope you all have a lovely night. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Sunday Surprise and have a good night. Goodbye.